Hi everyone, welcome to this video. Thank you for joining me. Today we are multiplying and dividing rational expressions. Um, hopefully you watched my previous video on how we simplify rational expressions. We really, really need that to understand how to properly simplify, a little factoring reminder and what it means to cross things out. So we're gonna need that definitely for today's lesson. So let's take a look. It says find each product. Now I have this fraction over a fraction or this rational expression over a rational expression. And what I want us to remember is about cross simplifying. Remember back in the day, you learned how to multiply, let's say three over eight times four over five. And you were taught, yes, you can multiply straight across and get 12 over 40 and then simplify it. Or what you could do is cross simplify first because four over eight really becomes one over two. And then if I multiply straight across, I get three over 10 because one, three times one is three, two times five is 10. And I would have gotten that here if I divided by four divided by four, it would simplify here. But cross simplifying sometimes can be really, really helpful, making the values that you're working with smaller before we multiply straight across and get our final result. So we're gonna take a look at that here. Now you could do this in any kind of order you want. I'm just gonna go by my numbers first, my coefficients, and then my variables. So what I would see here is, okay, seven and 49 simplify to one over seven because seven is, they're both divisible by seven. And 14 and 12 are divisible by two. So 14 is gonna become a seven and 12 is gonna become a six. Now, not, not only can you cross simplify, but don't forget you can simplify within the fraction. So one over six is fine, I can't simplify that. But seven over seven, those are actually just gonna be gone completely. Now, x squared and then x. So I can take an x away in the denominator and take one of those x's away in the numerator. I've got y over y to the fourth. So if I cross out a y on top, I'm get, this is gonna become y to the third in the denominator. If I cross out a z on top, this is gonna become z to the second in the denominator. And now you kind of make this mess of an expression, so you have to look at things carefully. Technically, all I have left in my numerators is one times x, which is just x. My denominator, I'm left with six, z to the second, and then y to the third. And that's my final expression. Um, I did order it in alphabetical order. So you could write z six z squared y cubed or six y cubed z squared. Again, I just put it in alphabetical order. Um, next one, let's look at the same process. So cross simplifying where I can. So I'm gonna look at my numbers first, my coefficients. So three over nine becomes one third. Then I've got r squared over r. So I'm gonna cross out the r, make that just one r. X, there's nothing to simplify out with. T cubed and t to the fourth. So if I cross out t to the third in the denominator, this just becomes t in the numerator. So I'm left with r x t over three. That's it. Okay, so now let's get past the monomials and work with some binomials and trinomial problems. So I need to simplify and factor whatever I can so that I can cross simplify, because right now the way this looks, there's nothing I can simplify. So b plus three is just b plus three. Four b minus 12, it's a binomial. There is a greatest common factor. The GCF here is four. So I'm gonna go ahead and factor out a four and I would be left with b minus three. Okay, a trinomial. We know what factor pair of three adds up to give me a negative four. Well, the only way to get three is a one times three. You would need a negative one and a negative three to add up to get to that negative four. So negative three, negative one, add up to get negative four, and they multiply to get that positive three. What factor pair of negative 30 gives you a negative seven? One times 30, no. Two times 15, no. Three times 10, yeah, three and a 10 would work as long as the 10 is negative and the three is positive. And now remember cross simplifying. So I can cross out this B plus three and this B plus three. Interesting, right? What else do you see you can simplify? B minus three and B minus three. So my numerator is left with just B minus one. Now my denominator, I have four times b minus 10. And I literally just write it like that. There's no need to distribute, just leave it in that simplified factored form. Next one, a squared plus 4a. So this is a binomial, it's not a difference of squares. There is a GCF, 
the GCF in this numerator is A. So if I factor out an A, it's A times A plus 4. A squared is just A squared. A to the fourth is just A to the fourth. Now, A squared plus 2A minus 8. Factor pairs of 8 are 1 and 8. No. 2 and 4? Yes. I need a 2 and a 4 to get a 2. The 4 has to be positive. The 2 would have to be negative. Now we can cross things out. So A plus 4, A plus 4, that's gone. A to the fourth, A to the second. So I can cross out A to the second and take two of those away and make that A to the second. So now look carefully, though, what I have left. I still have an A here. So that's A times A squared, which is A to the third. And then it's over A minus 2. Remember, you can't simplify A's out here. You can only simplify things when they're being multiplied by something else, not when they're being added or subtracted. Last one of this skill. So x squared minus 25. We saw this in our last lesson, guys, the difference of squares. Perfect square minus a perfect square. So square root of x squared is x. Square root of 25 is 5. One gets a plus, one gets a minus. x squared minus 49. Another perfect square minus a perfect square. Square root of x squared is x. Square root of 49 is 7. One gets a plus, one gets a minus. Trinomials now. What factors of 7 give you negative 8? Well, you can only pick 1 and 7, so they're both going to be negative. Negative 1, negative 7 gets me that negative 8. Factor pair of 25, that will add up to get negative 10. 1 and 25, no. 5 and 5, yes. They both have to be negative. So we cross out what we can. So here's something really, really important to know. See this x minus 5 here, and see two of them here? It's a one-for-one one deal, guys. We can't just cross everything out just because we saw that it had something in common. So I can cross out one of the x minus 5s on top and just one of them on the bottom. I can't cross out two. It's got to be an even deal. So what that x minus 5 there is just going to stay. x minus 7 and x minus 7. Now, I technically have x plus 5 and x minus 1 in my numerator. So that stays actually in my final answer. x plus 5, x minus 1. My denominator would be x plus 7, x minus 5. And I know it's like you think we can start crossing things out, but you definitely can't. That is it. Now, those were all multiplying problems. We're going to take a look at division problems, which is the quotient. Quotient is the answer to a division problem. Remember when you learn how to divide fractions, you leave the first fraction the way it is, the division sign becomes multiplication, and we do the reciprocal of the second fraction. So here, you always have to rewrite a division problem before you start cross-simplifying. If you try to cross-simplify right now, I'm telling you it's going to be wrong, wrong, wrong. I wish it would be right, but it's not. So first step is always cross uh, always rewrite. So first fraction stays, division becomes multiplication, and then we take the reciprocal of the second fraction. Now we can cross simplify. Once it's a multiplication problem, then you can cross simplify. So 8 over 44, both divisible by 4, so that's going to be 2 over 11. 25 and 20 are both divisible by 5, so that's going to be 5 over 4. I also notice I can simplify 2 over 4, so that's going to become 1 over 2. x squared is gone, which crosses this out into just x. So my numerator that I'm left with is 1 times 5, which is 5, and then 2x times 11, which is 22x. Next one, leave the first fraction, change the division to a multiplication. Now the reciprocal of the second fraction, so this one was easy to flip. This one, remember, it's really x plus 3 over 1. So then the reciprocal would be 1 over x plus 3. Now, 3x plus 9 is a binomial that can be factored. There is a GCF of 3 there. So I'm going to go ahead and factor out a 3. Everything else is good to go. This works out nicely for us because then the x plus 3, x plus 3 is gone. I'm simply left with 3 over x squared because 3 times 1 is 3, and then x squared is all I have left. Okay, next one. x minus 5 stays x squared minus 9x plus 18. So factor pairs of 18 that give me negative 9. 1 times 18? No. 3 and 6? Yes, if they're both negative. So I'm going to go ahead, factor that denominator. I might as well. Change the division sign to multiplication. 
and I'm going to flip this fraction and factor at the same time. So if I flip that, it's going to be x minus 6 over, now remember, x squared minus 25, a perfect square minus a perfect square. We did this problem just before. becomes x plus 5, x minus 5. Okay, so x minus 5, x minus 5, gone. x minus 6, x minus 6, gone. Notice it looks like both of my, my numerators are completely gone. Excuse me, but remember there's really a 1 there. So when I multiply straight across, it's 1 over, and then x minus 3 times x plus 5. And again, don't distribute, just leave it. Okay. All right, so we're going to do the same thing. We're going to rewrite and factor at the same time. So in this first one, we leave it, but let's factor. So y cubed minus 6y squared. So the GCF here would be y squared. So it's going to be y squared, open parentheses, y minus 6. And then we can factor a 2 out of this denominator and get 2 times y plus 3. So first fraction, again, stays in its order, but we're going to factor it at the same time. Division sign becomes multiplication, and then we're going to do the reciprocal of the second fraction. This will go in the numerator. I can factor a 3 out, so that's 3 times y plus 3 over y plus 2. Now, I wish I had better news for us. Only thing that looks like you could simplify out here is a y plus 3. Nothing else can go. I can't cross out this y squared and a y because that's not y, it's y plus 2. So I have a lot left over. So it's 3y squared times y minus 6, so everything in the numerator, over my denominator of 2 times y plus 2. Last one for us. So x squared minus 16x plus 64. Factor pair of 64 that gives me negative 16 would be a negative 8 and a negative 8. Uh, factor pair of 25 that gives me negative 10 would be negative 5, negative 5 change the division to a multiplication, do the reciprocal of the second fraction, which there's nothing to factor. Remember I told you just before, it's a one-to-one -one deal. So if I cross out one of these x minus 8s on top, one goes at the bottom. I can't just cross them all out. It's a one-for-one -one deal. One of the x minus 5s on the bottom, one on top, and I'm left with just x minus 8 over x minus 5. I hope this video was helpful for you. Thank you so much for watching. If the factoring is really uh, still a struggle for you, make sure you go back and watch my other factoring videos for help. Bye.